So let's go back to Pine Ridge. Pine Ridge is a very, very bad place, and it is the poster child for how bad Native America is and what a failed policy the United States has with, the, with uh, Native America. I should preface this story by saying, not much grows up there. They call it the Badlands for a reason. Um, but during World War II, the US government uh, went to um, this reservation and others in South Dakota and lots of other places and brought industrial hemp seeds, hemp for victory, and said, we know in fact that hemp will grow here and we would like to encourage you to grow it. It is one of the only crops capable of being cultivated there. Okay, let's go back to the 21st century, to the family of Alex Whiteplume, who you see uh, there on the slide. He and his extended family were not only in, in terrible financial straits, but they were also morally sick of the cycle of dependency on the US government. Now, I really want to emphasize here, this is the story of a family. This is not the story of an entire Native nation working collectively. This is a story about individuals, and this is a story that matters. They tried various uh, enterprises on Lakota land. Uh, they grew alfalfa, they grew barley and corn, they raised horses, they raised bison, all with barely subsistence results. This was not the way for the white plumes to actually um, be able to improve themselves and have what is called the American dream. In 1998, the Uglala Sioux passed an ordinance to allow the cultivation of low THC hemp. Low THC means you could smoke it all day and all night and never, never get any um, psychoactive benefit from it. This is industrial hemp. This is, that's all you can do with it is make, you know, rope and paper and stuff. This is not marijuana we're talking about. No psychoactive properties. There's a thriving world market for it and the crops sustainable, despite the reservation's short growing season, and the sale of hemp products is completely legal within the United States. The White Blooms did a great deal of research from their home on the reservation. They courted outside investors and lined up potential buyers, all on their own. They pooled their modest resources to fund this venture, and they got private outside investors to throw in their funds as well. Remember, completely private on the scope of a family, not a tribe. And in April 2000, White Plume and his family planted industrial hemp on what had been historically recognized as their farming area. They nurtured the crop, they cared for it, it thrived, they raised it for months to the point of harvest. And just before they were preparing to harvest the hemp, a surprise federal DEA raid was launched on his property, property sovereign to the Uglala Sioux, according to the 1868 Treaty of Fort Laramie, and they raised all of the crops to the ground. Saying that industrial hemp was uh, related to cannabis and cannabis was prohibited by federal anti-drug laws of 1968, even though it was the federal government that first brought industrial hemp seeds to the reservation and even though the sale of industrial hemp in the United States is completely legal. The next year, the White Plumes did it again. And the next year, the DEA did it again. In August 2002, White Plume was served with eight civil charges by the US District Attorney related to the hemp cultivation and a court order prohibiting continued growing of the crop. He has appealed, he is still appealing, and if anyone on earth can't afford a decade of being caught up in the courts, it's the White Plume family, and yet that's where they still are. And there has been no other entrepreneurial effort on the Pine Ridge Reservation. An entrepreneurial family was ruined, punished for trying to break the bonds of dependency on which the US seems to insist. And that is the problem with Native America today. 